Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Oracle Open World for exclusive coverage on Howard Street where they shut the streets down in San Francisco for 60,000 attendees at Oracle Open World. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com Research. Our next guest is Katrina Gossick, Director of Product Management at Oracle, Oracle Commerce, with Chris Schutz, the Vice President of Development at Oracle. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you, you, welcome. Thanks for coming on, I really appreciate it. We just had one of your customers on. Um, she called herself a small fish in, the big, in her perception of Oracle um, with the commerce cloud, but yet that is the benefit of the cloud. There are no fish size discrimination. All, all businesses can use the cloud. Yeah. I mean, that obviously is the cloud, so great use case. Talk Absolutely. about that, I mean, this is not, I mean, Oracle could be perceived, oh yeah, we saw the big iron, big databases for the large companies, doing all this workflows, but now you have a small business that's growing and you guys are helping them with their business. Not Absolutely. just the technology, you're making connections with them. Yes, um, so one fun thing about Oracle is that working in the commerce industry, we serve some of the biggest brands in the world. Um, but with our new cloud product, which was just released in June, uh, we've been able to capture an entire new market segment. Um, businesses like Elaine Turner, we just heard from, uh, Carry Leader, we're really helping them stay agile and kind of from the local market that they serve in Texas, really expand their audience globally, internationally, hopefully, eventually, and really grow their brand to, um, to new audiences. We're really excited about that. So what's the specific solution set that you guys are offering? Because again, we heard from her that, you, that she was so happy with the experience, but moreover, she was early on with the program, with Oracle team, I'm sure you're getting your requirements both on the business side and, and the technology side. So during that process this past year, what were those requirements? You guys are out in the field, mm -hmm. listening to customers, what requirements are coming in, and what's the, the table stakes, and what's the minimum viable product that you guys are offering today, and how does that extend out? Yeah, absolutely. So right now with Commerce Cloud, we're working with our very early customers, um, very closely with product management, product development, product strategy, really learning from them and their teams about what they need in the product, kind of how big their teams are, how they're using the product, and um, additionally working with partners in Oracle, like CPQ Cloud, to grow the product more into B2B as well. Yeah, and so I, could you talk about that a little bit? You know, yeah. talk, talk about the, when people start really thinking about automating that whole configure price quote process and how, where you guys yeah. fit. So um, my, my focus with Oracle is on configure price quotes. So we actually, this product's about 15 years old. Oracle acquired it a couple of years ago. Um, when we started the company, we were kind of lucky that we made the decision early on to make it a pure cloud-based product, which was kind of a lucky call in 2000 <laughs> when we did that. But to your, to your point, John. build your own cloud. Yeah, so it, we, yeah, we created a cloud and then jumped in, yeah. So, uh, but we, you know, we obviously started in kind of the small to mid-market space, and now we have a lot of Fortune 500 customers, you know, a Siemens, a GE, for example, that run a lot of installs of uh, CPQ Cloud. And what CPQ is really focused on is helping our customers uh, sell more and sell faster. That's what we say. So we make their sales reps very productive to um, quote their products out to their customers, especially if they have really complex products that have complex pricing, lots of options. It's very difficult to get an accurate quote quickly to your customer. And you want to do it quickly so you can win the business. And that's what CPQ Cloud does. It manages all those complex rules and calculations to do that. And what's interesting about um, the Commerce Cloud piece is now folks have used CPQ in a direct sales and a distribution model. Now they're taking those same configuration models, they're putting them inside of um, Commerce Cloud and now going direct to the end customer. And so they're taking virtually all the costs out of the transaction and that's what we're, we're super excited about that. So how's it work? I mean, it's got to go back 15 years, but, but it's like, uh, I've done these things before and they're very complicated. There are so many permutations and as you say, rules. So what do you have? A set of rules engines and yeah. you know, uh, yep. configurable you know, software that allows me to build my own model or can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So there's several pieces to CPQ. Um, so there's a rules engine, a configuration engine that allows you to model really complex relationships, often mathematically based. Um, there's a workflow engine because a lot of these deals need yeah. to get approved from the VPS sales or legal. 
Um, there's a document engine that allows you to build contracts, proposals. The L manager has to get involved sometimes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cats, and yeah. then there's a whole financial calculation engine because oftentimes with these products, even if you're quoting, let's say, a, a million dollar CT scanner to a hospital, the product configuration is complicated, but the commercial aspects of that deal are sometimes even more complicated because they might lease it, they might do 50% up front, they might do 50% after a runoff in the hospital, and then there's um, custom discounting, ad hoc discounting, so all those things have to be modeled. And often the commercial aspects of the deal are harder than actually getting the product configuration right. So, so, so Katrina, it was great to listen to Carrie. I mean, yeah, I didn't absolutely. realize she's a twenty-person company. She told us off camera, They're really twenty-person company. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, "Yeah, we were surprised that Oracle was, you know, so, you know, responsive to us." But so, talk about. I mean, your customers are all trying to compete with, you know, Amazon. There's just, and so, everybody has an Amazon strategy, Amazon War Room, and you're at the heart of that from a technology perspective. Can you talk about the trends in e-commerce and how you're enabling customers to compete? Yeah, absolutely. I think. For customers like Elaine Turner, we just heard from uh, Carrie Leader, I think their strategy is, as a local business, really to get more market share. And for them, other than putting stores up in every city in the US, um, which gets really expensive, online is a great strategy for them. Um, and they need to compete against companies like Amazon. And as we take the product up market, um, more into big retail and into B2B clients, we're going to see that competitive force a lot. And I think the things that differentiate us against companies like Amazon is the fact that um, we uh, can host the product in the cloud, but also provide market leading uh, tools and merchandising capabilities, a fully responsive site um, that customers can really differentiate and, and build their own brand around their commerce experience. So tell me, do you guys have a marketplace and is that part of the core strategy? We or? integrate with marketplaces, but um, uh, customers can leverage our product to become a marketplace essentially. For themselves, but there's no Oracle marketplace yet. Right, that's right. <laughs> the key yeah. word, yeah, like almost connect the dots. But that's interesting because you know, her point was, you guys came in and helped her, but more of you went to all of her customers and suppliers have different use cases. So yes. you guys are helping people connect and build marketplaces. Yeah, so she comes from an interesting space because um, she's not a, she is a retailer and a brand. So they're leveraging the digital site to become kind of a bigger presence um, in, in, in the nation's eyes, I guess, kind yeah, of introduced right. to new markets, but um, they're also using it to sell online. So they're both a brand and a retailer. So they kind of play, uh, walk both, both, both ends of the spectrum. Um, so what they use the, the website for is also to market to their own um, resellers as well, um, to take the Elaine Turner brand and resell it in their own stores. And, and I mean, her story is not that uncommon, right? You've got a s um. small company or even a large company that really doesn't you know, quite have it right yet and they want to double their conversion rate. I mean, something as simple as that as, a, as an objective, but how does Oracle, and she, and she literally said, well, we're, we're relying on Oracle to help us do that. How does Oracle do that? Take us through sort of the capabilities that you provide and how that translates into that business objective. Sure, so as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Commerce Cloud is kind of based on our core enterprise product. Um, so it's got all of the knowledge from a decade and a half of engineering, product management built into it, all the merchandising capabilities, promotions capabilities, catalog management capabilities, transaction capabilities, kind of built into a cloud package. So we've taken that core engine code and kind of built a Rust API layer around it. So we manage the plumbing, if you will, and manage, make sure the performance is up to modern standards, make sure that uh, the tools are easy for customers to use. Um, and then the customers can make the site their own, really. All the uh, customization is done on the front end. So Elaine Turner can look different from the other brands we have showcased uh, this year at Open World. Rock Creek, which is an apparel retailer uh, for sporting goods, or um, Hollander, which is a bedding company. So every site looks different. So end-to-end -end capabilities. You Correct. provide that, and then I can customize it. Now, how, what's the relationship between you know, CPQ and, and e-commerce? How tightly integrated are they? And talk about that a little bit. Um, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So we, we have a standard integration package to run between the two products. So it's literally, you know, if you purchase Oracle Commerce and CPQ, you can turn that integration on. And for customers that um, are doing e-commerce but have um, products that are configured or lightly configured, they then um, basically we run inside of that commerce platform utilizing the shopping cart that Oracle Commerce has in there. 
one of the things about the cloud that we love, and we've been covering the cloud since cloud was cloud, you know, years ago, is the standing stuff up fast. Yeah. Some of the prepackaged software back in the day when I was growing up, you buy a software package, you load it up, and it's good to go, and then you do your thing. Cloud, same way, but faster. Highly accelerated, easy to stand up. So one of the things that your customers have, have said to us here, uh, Carrie said, was the integration was huge. Mm -hmm. So from an integration standpoint, obviously the theme of the show, integrated cloud, that really is going to be the sweet spot. So getting updates to the software, having integration is a key part. Can you give some insight into what yeah. goes on in the Oracle development world and how you guys look at that integration? Because we are living in an API economy. They want to push a real-time experience uh, to their customer base, but they don't want to be a full stack development shop. They don't want to build their own platform. Yeah. And that, that's what, you know, that's what makes these products difficult to develop. And that's one of the things that Oracle manages very, very well is that common integration bus or process for them. Because, um, and that's the big benefit of sort of buying a lot of Oracle products is they do fit together very nicely. They're, you know, your total cost of ownership goes down with every one you accumulate because you're not managing middleware. You're not worrying about an upgrade breaking an integration process because Oracle owns that. We own that for our customers and that's a big part of the, the value proposition. But what, what makes cloud apps so difficult to develop well is because you want to keep everyone on the same code base, but you want to be let them personalize it yeah. on their schedule. And then at the same time, after they personalize it, you want it to be able to upgrade yeah. seamlessly. And that's what makes these products really so, difficult to develop. And so that's where you know Oracle's very good at that. Let's talk about large scale, because obviously cloud has to be large scale as well, because that's a big thing. So you got to have a large scale, high performancing system. Um, they're a smaller retailer and designer, so they might not be the big fish in terms of volume, but you might have huge retailers. So how are you guys scaling up the platform on the cloud? What are the scale concerns? What features do you have? How do you alleviate that concern of the flash mobbing, you know, the shopping, you know, Thanksgiving weekend or Christmas yeah. kind of phenomenon? Yeah, so from the, the commerce perspective, um, as I mentioned, the, the platform itself is built on the, the enterprise code. So we're not worried about scaling. It's backward to, compatible. Exactly. So <laughs> got, or forward um, compatible to more functionality. <laughs> exactly. So you know, it's battle tested. Yeah. We're not worried about transaction volumes or size of the product catalog or integrations. Um, so essentially, small retailers are taking advantage of that kind of enterprise grade platform in the cloud right now. And, and they pay for it when they use it. So this is the key mm -hmm. cloud differentiator that people kind of getting now mainstream, which is, hey, here's an enterprise package, enterprise grade, mm -hmm. but if you're SMB, small medium sized business, and only using it, you price it for that. But mm -hmm. as they get, they become Macy's or something, yeah, I mean, they'll pay more. Yeah, I mean, kind of a, a catalog <laughs> engine that you can take advantage of, yeah. right? And what we're doing is growing the, the tooling over time. So over time, bigger retailers can take advantage of the same promotions, merchandising capabilities, catalog management capabilities for that end-to-end kind of yep. commerce solution. The other thing that she talked about was this notion of customization, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. which is they want to do, they want to have standardization, take all the benefits, but also do some customization. She teased out the developer angle. Mm -hmm. So what is that opportunity? And how would you guys talk to the market about that and to customers? Hey, you can hire developers, here's how the interface, and what are some of the specifics on, hey, I love the platform, I'm a stand-up in commerce cloud, um, thanks, and I got some other apps for Oracle all over the place if I want it and grow, but I'm going to hire a developer team now to come in and bolt on a user experience tailored to my business. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually discourage our customers from hiring purely developers to manage the products. What we really, when our customers ask us, what kind of a person should I have to maintain CPQ, I tell them, it should be somebody that knows the business and is fairly analytical, and not necessarily a developer. I mean, obviously developers can do it and they're successful, but um, the, these generation of products, um, we like to try to avoid the word customization, we say configuration. Okay. So basically behind the scenes, you know, you're flipping all these switches and buttons and adding um, diagrams and things like that to get the software to react the way you want. And that's more of a, you know, a highly analytical kind of persona to do that versus somebody that, like a, a developer. That's an yeah. interesting distinction because customization is oftentimes a bad word these days because it just, lo you know, gets you, locks you into this. It's not even you know, possible. Cement. I mean, it's not even an option, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. On the core code, but on the UX stuff, I mean, they might they have a website, right? Yeah, on the right? front I mean, end, on the commerce side, every site is, can look completely different. Um, you, you know, Elaine Turner looks different from Rock Creek, looks different from Live Comfortably, so we can't manage the plumbing. So the tools and the, the transaction pieces and the catalog, but 
Are all the customers on the UI side yeah. can make the product completely different. So let's take an example. Do you have a chat a component, or like a chat application? To a service cloud. Mm -hmm. To a service cloud, mm -hmm. okay, so they got to go there to get it. What if they want to build their own chat system using so Node.js nice, yeah, or something? The Oracle, or the Cloud Apps Marketplace that we have allows, you, we partner as Oracle with companies like Power Reviews, who's here this week, or um, uh, uh, other uh, application vendors that enhance the product, um, and it's easy to integrate on the front end. So you can add all those capabilities through the Cloud Apps Marketplace. Um, so you, you are developer reviews, friendly videos. through the developer program, right. not necessarily coming in and retrofitting commerce engine. Give them, right. you know, we give them pieces Tooling. of real estate in the app that they can, if they really want to develop like a chat feature, they can put it in there. But it's, you know, it's contained and it's Got not, it. yeah. you know, it's not something you have to use, and it, and that way it fully upgrades. Yeah, you're not going to mangle the source code. Completely right. different. Yeah. Yeah. And you Got mentioned. Uh, responsive earlier, mm -hmm. and I'm on Elaine Turner, and it's yeah. beautiful responsive design, I love it. Uh, what about mobile apps, and what about mobile in general? Is so it's interesting, that's that? a good question. Um, yesterday, uh, during our, uh, Forrester did a session with us and talked about some key trends um, in, in commerce, and mobile is, is no longer the nice to have, it's the key table stakes. I think we're moving towards, you know, mobile being 50% of transactions now, and all of our customers, honestly, are moving towards responsive um, because it's easier, it's faster, any device can handle yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, no one has to download an Single app. Single code base. Single code yeah. base, right. Yeah. So we web see responsive, the market. Just to clarify for the audience, web responsive versus native HTML5 and Correct. or yeah. Android iOS app. Yeah, I mean, we still yeah. do have customers who are very brand focused, who do do native apps for specific kind of loyalty programs, but the trend is moving more towards responsive. I mean, design. sure, there are use cases for native Absolutely. apps, right? I mean, yeah. I like the if fact If you know that your requirements 100%. If I'm on an airline, or like, I like my my Jet Blue app Absolutely. because it knows yep. me. Okay, but in retail, you know, I think I just love the fact that it's responsive. Anywhere, I mean, it's so much more convenient yeah. than having to download the app. I mean, it really is app creep. You know, yeah. well, the Absolutely. data we're data we're seeing is on, on on mobile apps, native apps. Really, it's a one one shot deal. Right. Users don't aren't going to come back for another app if right. you miss if you miss your target. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to really be locked in. 100% on the use case. I mean, there are you know, some brands which like, is hard to do. Who, who you know favor a mobile app because it's a very specific use case for right. their customers, yeah. and the customers who use apps tend yeah. to be more loyal or spend more money sometimes. Right, agreed. But responsive is the universal kind of way to go. So yeah. that's your strategy, is really to target the larger part of the market yeah. and yeah. You know, put the innovation there, exactly. as opposed to forking it with... 100%, yeah. We didn't have a choice with CPQ because our often our configuration models are just too complicated, so. Right. We had to go that approach. We still have to do server-side processing, but we make it look like it's a native app for the users. And mobile is, um, it's something our, our customers have been doing for a long time. And what's interesting with mobile is um, a direct sales force is now using an iPad or a Surface device as like an interactive selling tool. Yeah. So if I'm going to quote you, um, you know, let's say a high-end copier with dozens of options, I'll just sit down with you and show you my iPad and we'll pick the options together. Yeah. So it's become an interactive selling Well, oh, you'll hand it to me and say, go ahead, you yeah. pick. Yeah. And in some cases, yeah. they hand it to them and they yeah. do the e-signature right there and close well, it. Well, we were riffing with the, your customer carry earlier that you know the holograms are coming in retail, all kinds of new, we, you know, yeah, cutting edge Virtual stuff Virtual reality, yeah. drones, yeah. Right. who knows what's coming next, yeah. right? So, Kara, I got, I got, basics I got, is what we take care of. Well, Oculus Rift could be fantastic. You like that handbag, yeah. turn over this selection <laughs> over here. I can imagine some great use cases there, so super exciting. But let's take that, that to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, e-commerce. I'm not gonna say old term, but it's been around, you know, e-business back in the web days, web response, totally good critical infrastructure, I got that. But now social business is now kind of the next wave. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see early days where the operationalizing of social data, and you talked about some of the other uh, the parts of the service cloud, the marketing cloud, this is a big part of it. So the persona, all the identities in the database. So as you move into social business, how is the social commerce piece I've been there. Can you guys just give some insight into the, the roadmap, the direction, what's shipping, what's available? If I say, hey, I love it, I want a hardened e-commerce infrastructure, which is the critical infrastructure, but now a new layer of social commerce is yeah. existing. What um, do you guys have to offer? Share some, some insight. So from an Oracle perspective, Commerce Cloud uh, can easily integrate with our social cloud um, for things like um, shopping on Facebook or we're moving towards working with partners to create um, buy buttons for um, you know the key social networks like Twitter, Pinterest, so that customers can buy from, from those applications as well. Um, but then also integration partners like Power Reviews to do uh, native user reviews on the, um, on the commerce sites as well. 
So there, there are a couple different angles. Um, is, that, is that a different group, a different product within Oracle? So uh, Power Reviews is actually a partner of ours, oh, a technology okay. partner of ours. Yeah, they okay. are. They do user reviews, ratings, and reviews. Okay. But social cloud, social commerce is not a social, product within your. Social cloud is part of the CX suite Got it, at okay. Oracle. Yeah. Okay, well guys, thanks for sharing. Any final thoughts on Oracle Open World? What's the week been like for you guys? Share some, some insight into what's been going on here at Oracle Open World. Sure. Well, it's, you know, this is kind of our Super Bowl, I guess you would say. So <laughs> it's been, it's always a busy week, but it's a lot of fun. It's, um, the, the best part of it is, you know, a lot of our customers are here and we get to spend a lot of time with our customers and that helps us stay close to them to make the products even better. So. Any major insights and revelations this week? Uh, well, uh, what's interesting, we, we had a lot of new customers come this year, and they seem to be going live very quickly. So, uh, so we had a, a substantial manufacturer pitch yesterday. I don't, I can't remember if I can announce their name or not, but yeah. they, you know, they went not. live. Just, they it. It. <laughs> but anyways, they went live in three months. Um, you know, their equipment produces everything from cars to cell phones to. Uh, so that's um, final thoughts. Yeah. It's been great because we launched Commerce Cloud in June, and we've already got two live customers on the floor at the customer marketplace in Moscone. So we're really excited to see the momentum and great customers like Elaine Turner showcasing their, their products and helping them grow their business. Well, congratulations. Standing stuff easy and doing the commerce, scaling it up, getting stuff up quick. This is theCUBE. We are live at Oracle Open World. Go to siliconangle.tv for all the videos. And go check out our new crowd page. We aggregate all the social data from our platform. All the videos are loaded on crowdpages.co slash OOW15. If you want to see what's trending, what the conversation is, and see the videos, they're all up there right now. Go to crowdpages.co slash OOW15. We'll be right back with more CUBE coverage of Oracle Open World after this short break. <laughs>